students welcome to this maths class i hope that you all are happy and safe at home in our previous sections we have learned rational and irrational numbers rational and irrational numbers make together make up the collection of real numbers also we have learned the decimal expansion of rational and irrational numbers in this section we will learn about the mathematical operations on these real numbers the four mathematical operations are addition subtraction multiplication and division in earlier classes we have learned the rational numbers satisfy the commutative associative and distributed laws for addition and subtraction moreover if we add subtract multiply or divide two rational numbers we will get another rational number but the sum difference quotient and the product of irrational numbers are not always irrational let us see some example here root 3 plus minus root 3 we know root 3 is a rational number So sum of these two terms, root three plus minus root three. The sum of these two terms, we know that is equal to zero. Look at the next one, root six minus root six. That is also equal to zero. Root five into root five. We can write root five into root five as root of five into five, which is equal to root of 25 you know the square root of 25 that is equal to 5 it's also a rational number here we added two rational irrational we got the answer a rational number zero is a rational number and we subtracted two irrationals we got zero it's a rational number we multiply two irrational number we got a rational as an answer And next one is root seventeen divided by root seventy. That is equal to one. So in this case, we got if you add, subtract, multiply, or divide, we are getting rational numbers. So irrational in the case of irrational numbers, always we won't get irrationals. Uh, if we add, subtract, multiply, or divide, maybe you will get rational or you will get irrational numbers. Let us see few more examples. Root two into root five. Here two irrational numbers. We have multiplied these two irrational numbers. So root two into root five. We can write it as root of two into five. Root two into root five is equal to root of two into five, which is equal to root ten. Root ten is an irrational number. See the next one. If you add a rational and irrational number, when it Take the combination of one rational and irrational number. Two is a rational number. Root three is a irrational number. So sum of these two terms will be equal to two plus the value of root three is one point seven three. Exactly, it's growing. It's non-terminating. It's a rational number, so its decimal expansion is non-terminating, non-recurring. So you are getting two plus one point seven three, etc. Which is equal to if we add this, you will get two point seven three eight. Sorry, three point seven three etc. So it's going continuously, non-terminating, non-recurring decimal expansion. You will get that means it's a irrational number. Look at the next one. Two root three. That means two into root three. Here also we will get the same. Two into the value of root three. You can substitute one point seven three etc. So some when you find the product, you will get uh, another non-terminating, non-recurring decimal expansion. So it's also a irrational number. We can. See a few more examples. If you add or subtract or multiply or divide with a rational and irrational number, what result we will get? We can check it. See this example. Add two root two plus five root three, and root two minus three root three. Here we want to add these two terms, so it will be two root two 
प्लस फाइव रूट थ्री प्लस रूट टू माइनस थ्री रूट थ्री टू टर्म्स सो इफ यू एड वेन यू आर एड इंग दिस इफ यू री अरेज द टर्म्स द ऑर्डर ऑफ दिस नंबर्स वी कैन इजली वी कैन फाइंड आउट द लाइक टर्म्स सो यू आर टू रूट टू प्लस रूट टू प्लस फाइव रूट थ्री माइनस थ्री रूट थ्री री अरेज द टर्म्स सो इफ यू कैन अवॉइड दिस ब्रैकेट बिकॉज इट्स एडिशन ऑन एड ऑफ ब्रैकेट now we can rearrange the terms so 2 root 2 plus root 2 these two are like terms and 5 root 3 and minus 3 root 3 that are like terms when you add these two terms we can see 2 root 2 plus 1 root 2 that is 2 plus 1 3 root 2 plus 5 root 3 minus 3 root 3 That means five minus three into root two. Root three is common. When you take it out, then five minus three. Here root two is common. Take it out, then two plus one. That is three. So three root two plus five minus three. Two root three. Again, we are getting the term like this. Three root two plus two root three. We know that three root two is an irrational number. So when you substitute the value of root two, again you will get an irrational number. Here also we will get another irrational number. Sum of these two irrational number will be a irrational number. When we multiply these two terms, six root five into two root five, we can write it as the rational numbers. You can multiply first six into two into multiply these two irrationals root five into root five. Which is actually it will be six into root five into two into root five. So rational numbers we write it first, then irrational numbers. So six into two, which is equal to twelve into root five into root five. We can write it as root of five into five. So twelve into root twenty five. Root twenty five is five. So twelve into five, which is equal to Sixteen. So here, when you find the product of these two irrational numbers, we got a rational number. So from these all examples, we understood one thing: if we add, subtract, or multiply or divide two irrational numbers, the result may be rational or irrational number. From these all examples, we will get two more facts. That is, the sum or difference of a rational number and an irrational number is always irrational. The example, like uh, uh, question number three, two plus two root three, two is a rational number and root three is a irrational number. Sum of these two is always irrational. And the same way, the product or different or quotient of a rational number and an irrational number. A rational number and a irrational number that is also always irrational. Uh, example like a seven by root five. Seven is a rational number. Root five is a irrational number. The quotient of this uh, seven by root five is always irrational number. Now we can discuss about the operations of taking square root of real numbers. If a be a rational number, a the letter a be a rational uh, sorry natural number, if a be a natural number, then square root of a is equal to b, which means that b square is equal to a. For example, root nine. Root nine is equal to three. We know that three square is also equal to nine. That's why square root of nine is three. The square of three is equal to nine. Therefore, the square root of nine is equal to three. That means root a if root a equal to b, then b square will be equal to a. If you take another example, if you extend the square root to the cube root and fourth root or nth root, you can see that. If you are taking cube root of twenty-seven, 
cube root of 27, which is equal to 3. Because we know that 3 cube is equal to 27. Another example, cube root of 64. Cube root of 64, that is equal to 4. That means if 4 raised to 3 is equal to 64, then cube root of 64 is equal to 4. What will be the nth root of the number? So, if it is a square root, we can say b square is equal to a. If cube root, we can say that b cube is equal to a. Same way, fourth root, we can say b raised to 4 equal to a. Then if nth root means b raised to if b raised to n is equal to a, then b will be equal to nth root of a. That means the nth root of a equal to nth root of a equal to b if b raised to n equal to a. So we can conclude that let a be a real number. A be a real number. So, the nth root of a real number, nth root of a real number is equal to b if b raised to n is equal to a. That means, example, cube root of 27 is equal to 3 if 3 cube is equal to 27. Square root of 9 is equal to 3 if 3 square is equal to 9. Cube root of 64 is equal to 4 if 4 raised to 3 is equal to 64. So remember the nth root of a real number. Nth root of a is equal to b if b raised to n is equal to a. Not that the sign, the simple used in square root of 9 and cube root of uh, 27 and uh, cube root of 64. That simple, this is known, it's called the radical sign. In the earlier classes, we studied about it represents the square root, positive square root. Now, we are extending that to nth root, so the simple is called radical sign. Now, we can discuss some identities related to square roots. For example, let A and B are positive real numbers. A and B are real numbers. Then root A into root B is equal to root of A into B. That is root AB. That's the first identity. Root A into root B is equal to root of A into B. For example, root 2 into root 3 is equal to root of 2 into that is root 6. Then second identity is root of A by B is equal to root A by root B or root A by root B is equal to root of A by B. And third identity is root A plus root B into root a minus root b. It is in the form of a plus b into a minus b. We know that a plus b into a minus b is equal to a square minus b square. Here a is equal to root a and b is equal to root b. a plus b into a minus b which is equal to a square. That is root a whole square minus root b whole square a square minus b square 4. Root a whole square means root a into root a. We know that root a into root b equal to root of a b. So root a whole square we can write it as root a into root a which is equal to root of a into a which is equal to root a square. It's a perfect square. So a square the square root of a square number is that number itself root of a square is equal to a. We know that root 4 square that is root 16 that is equal to 4. Root 3 square that is root 9 which is equal to 3. So root a whole square is equal to a and minus root b whole square is equal to b. So you get a minus b. 
root of a root a plus root b into root a minus root b is equal to a minus b. The next added is a plus root b into a minus root b. A rational number and an irrational number. So a it is also in the form of a plus b into a minus b. So which is equal to a square minus b square. So a square minus b square that is root b. Root b whole square which is equal to a square minus root b whole square equal to b. So a square minus b because we know that root b whole square means root b into root b that is equal to root of b into b that is root b square which is equal to b. So we will get here a square minus b. The next added is root a plus root b whole square. It is in the form of a plus b whole square. We know that a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. So here root a is equal to root a, b is equal to root b. So a plus b whole square here root a whole square. a square plus 2ab. 2 into a into b. That is 2 into root a into root b plus b square. That is root b whole square. Which is equal to root a whole square we know that it is equal to a plus 2 root a into root b. Root a into root b is equal to root a b. So 2 root a b plus root b whole square is equal to b. So that will be root a plus root b whole square is equal to a plus 2 root of a b plus b. Similarly, we can write root a minus root b whole square. This is in the form of a minus b whole square. So, a square root a whole square minus 2 into root a into root b plus root b whole square. Which is equal to a minus 2 into root of a b plus b. The next addend is root a plus root b into root c plus root d. It is in the form of a plus b into c plus d. We know that a plus b into c plus d is equal to a into c that is a c plus a into d that is a d plus b into c b c plus b into d that is b d. So same way you have to multiply this. So root a into root c is root of a c plus root a into root d that is root a d plus root b into root c that is root of b c plus root b into root d that is root d d. Using the above identities we can solve some problems. Simplify 5 plus root 5 into 5 minus root 5. It is in the form of a plus root b into a minus root b or you can simply we know the identity a plus b into a minus b. So, a plus b into a minus b is equal to a square minus b square. So, it will be 5 square minus root 5 whole square. That is equal to 5 square is 25 minus root 5 whole square or root b whole square or root a whole square. We know it is equal to a or b. So, here root 5 whole square is equal to 5. So, 25 minus 5 is equal to 20. Now the second question. 5 plus root 7 into 2 plus root 5. It is in the form of A plus B into C plus D. Each term is different. 
a plus b into c plus d. So, a into c plus a into d plus b into c plus b into d. So, a into c, that is 5 into 2, 5 to the 10. Plus 5 into root 5, that is 5 into root 5 is 5 root 5. Plus root 7 into 2, that is 2 root 7. Plus root 7 into root 5. Root 7 into root 5 is equal to root of 7 into 5 that is root 35. So we get the answer 10 plus 5 root 5 plus 2 root 7 plus root 35. I hope that you understand these identities and their relating pro related problems. The, you have to study these identities and uh, this uh, identities are very useful for the next section. So, you have to write and study these identities and using that identity you are able to uh, solve the problems like this. So, you have to practice it properly. Representing root x on the number line. Where x is a positive real number. This has been explained in the following steps. To representing root x on the number line, first you have to draw a line and mark a point A on it. Then mark a point B on the line such that A B equal to x unit. Mark a point B, that means the length of AB equal to x unit, because we need to represent root x, so AB equal to x unit. From point B, mark a distance of 1 unit and mark the new point as C. Take one unit from the point B and mark that point as C. So the length of BC is equal to one unit. Now find the midpoint of AC and mark the point as O. We can measure this length AC. Then take the midpoint of AC, then mark that point as O. Now OA and OC are equal in length. Now draw a semicircle with the center O and radius OA. O as a center, OA as a radius, draw a semicircle. Now, draw a line perpendicular to AC passing through the point B and that line intersect the semicircle at one point, mark it as D. The point, through the point B, draw a perpendicular line. You can measure 90 degree angle with your protractor at the point B, then you can mark it. So, Mark that point as D. The length of BD is equal to root X. Now, 
we can take B as a center, BD as a radius, draw an arc on the number line. You will get the position of root X. That line, that arc intersect the line at one point E. That point E represent root X. Let us justify this answer. Here we know that AB equal to X unit and BC equal to 1 unit. Therefore, AC is equal to AB plus BC that is X plus 1 unit. AB plus BC equal to AC. So, AC equal to X plus 1 unit. So, OA equal to OC that is equal to half of AC. OA and OC are the half of this AC because O is the midpoint of the line segment AC. So, OA equal to OC equal to half of AC that is half of X plus 1. So, the, it will be equal to X plus 1 by 2 units. Now, when you observe this figure, if you join this OD, here in the figure we can see that the length OD Here we take the perpendicular distance. So this is a right triangle because this angle is 90 degree. So OD is the hypotenuse. We know that hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus altitude square. Here we want to find the length OB. We know that OC is equal to X plus 1 by 2 units. So, we want to find the length of OB. Here, OB is equal to AB minus OA. AB minus OA. This is AB. AB from AB you subtract the length of OA. Then you will get the length OB. We know what is the length of AB and what is OA. AB equal to X unit. So, X minus OA is equal to X plus 1 by 2. Which is equal to take the LCM. Here LCM is 2. So, 2X minus X plus 1 by 2 which is equal to 2x minus x minus 1 by 2. Open the bracket. Which is equal to 2x minus x is x minus 1 by 2. So, the length of OB equal to x minus 1 by 2. Now, using the Pythagoras theorem, in triangle OBD, in triangle O, B, D, we have O, D square is equal to O, B square plus B, D square. Now, we know what is O, D because O, A, O, C and O, D are the radii of the circle. O, A, OC and OD are equal because they are the radii of the circle. We draw a semicircle with center O and OA as a radius. So OA equal to OC equal to OD. 
So we know the length of OD, we know the length of OB, we can find the length of BD. So BD square is equal to OD square minus OB square which is equal to the length of OD is equal to OA. So x plus 1 by 2 whole square minus OB square. OB is equal to x minus 1 by 2. So x minus 1 by 2 whole square. Now it will be in the form of A square minus B square. A square minus B square is equal to A plus B into A minus B. So here x plus A is equal to x plus 1 by 2. A plus B into A minus B. So it's a subtraction. So the next term should be in the bracket. Now you can solve this. Here the denominators are same. So directly you can add the numerators. So x plus 1 plus x minus 1. Plus 1 and minus 1 cancel. So x plus x is equal to 2x by 2 into. Here denominators are same. So you can subtract the numerators directly x plus 1 minus, you should op, here it is negative, so you should open the bracket. So, minus into x is minus x, minus into minus 1 is plus 1. So, x plus 1 minus x plus 1 by 2. x and minus x is cancelled. So, which is equal to 2x by 2, here 2 and 2 cancel. So, here x into 1 plus 1, 2. 2 by 2 equal to 1. So, x into 1 is equal to x. Now, we got bd square is equal to x. Therefore, bd is equal to square root of x. So, that is why we got here we are able to draw, we draw a perpendicular through the point B that intersect the semicircle at one point D. Now the length BD will be equal to root X. We proved this. So BD is equal to root X. The length of BD equal to root X. So we can represent this root X on the number line. Take B as a center, BD as a radius. Draw an arc, that arc will intersect the number line at one point. That point you mark it as E. So that, let, uh, that point E represent root X on the number line. Let us see one question. Represent root 3.5 on the number line. So first draw a line and mark a point A on it. And mark a point B on the line such that A B equal to 3.5 unit. Then from the from point B mark a distance of one unit. And mark the new point as C. Now the distance AB is equal to 3.5 unit. BC is equal to 1 unit. Then find the midpoint of AC and mark the point as O. You have to find the midpoint of AC and mark the point as O.
Now draw a semicircle with the O as a center and OE as a radius. Then draw a line perpendicular to AC passing through the point B and intersecting the semicircle at a point D. Draw a perpendicular line to AC through the point B. That perpendicular intersect the semicircle at a point D. Now the length BD is equal to root 3.5. We just verified this. So, now we know the length of BD will be equal to root 3.5. Now, B as a center, BD as a radius. Draw an arc. The dark will intersect the number line at a point E. The point E represent root X on the number line. So this point is root 3.5.